Hello everybody, this is Bodrich and oops, I did it again. Browser hopped back to Vivaldi, Vivaldi, Vivaldi browser. I changed the uh, browser to Vivaldi uh, and I have spent like a week uh, <laughs> configuring it and playing around with the settings and installing extensions and uh, diving into uh, user script and the uh, user styles and uh, things like that and I have actually had a pretty good time doing so uh, at least as long as I don't think about uh, that I'm using a chromium based browser but as soon as I start think about that it feels it, it doesn't feel good but I just pretend that uh, I, I'm not using a chromium based browser let's uh, see if we can find a Wikipedia page about Vivaldi. Antonio Vivaldi, uh, born 1678. This, um, there we have him. Vivaldi web browser uh, is created by the co-founder uh, of Opera, John Stevenson von Tetkna who is an Icelandic Norwegian programmer and businessman. It's a very non-Norwegian Icelandic uh, name, but whatever. They started Vivaldi, and this is weird. Uh, I think we can see it here. They started Vivaldi because uh, they were disappointed that opera their, their uh, child, you know, their browser that they created transitioned from the Presto layout engine or browser engine to a Chromium based browser. So they created Vivaldi, <laughs> which is also a Chromium based browser. But they tried to revive uh, a lot of the Presto based features from Opera. Uh, so this is Chromium with its uh, Opera inspired proprietary modifications and that doesn't sound like a good selling point really but it actually is uh, a good <laughs> browser because presto and opera had a lot of unique and cool features and and it really made opera a, a, a special browser back in the day at least i haven't used it now for a long time but I actually was using it, uh, I was switching between like Chrome, Firefox and Opera, uh, hopping around those three all the time, at least before 2010 or 2013 or whatever. Um, but Opera uh, is no longer a Norwegian company, I'm not really sure exactly how it works now, I think it's uh, acquired by, by Chinese uh, company, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, whatever. Co-creator of the CSS web standard. That's not a good thing to put on your CV, I'm sorry. Um, whatever, whatever. This is not about Opera, this is not about browser history, this is about uh, rising and the dirt hacking, because you're watching Bud Labs, like and subscribe. Um, I will make a couple of videos now, I thought, how to set, set up browse, uh, the Vivaldi browser uh, in this <laughs> weird way that I have here. One thing that might uh, stand out here in my configuration is that I don't have an address bar. Uh, because I'm using an extension called VB4C, so I can get an extension bar here, uh, whatever. Let's not go more into details there, but VB4C also lets you open links with, by just using the keyboard. It's one of those, it's like Vimium, Chromium, whatever they are called, you know, but I'm using this VB4C. I have found that is uh, the, the one I like best on Chromium-based browsers. There are different ones. Firefox has uh, three ductile. It's much better on Firefox, and uh, Pale Moon have the best one of them all. It's called Pentadactyl. It's uh, that that's the best reason to use uh, Pale Moon is uh, that it uh, is the only browser that supports uh, uh, Pentadactyl. But if you are using a Chromium based, then my uh, pick is that VB4C, which is a brand new extension. It's a fork of uh, Chrome, 
Chromium Vim or something it was called. But uh, this VB4C is a fork that happened just less than a month ago, so it's not even available in the uh, App Store, Extension Store, or whatever it's called. Yeah, the Chrome Web Store, because this is how Vivaldi works. You can install uh, extensions directly from a Google Chrome uh, Web Store here. Um, and I haven't found a single extension that doesn't work on Vivaldi. These are my extensions. Maybe we can just quickly uh, talk about what, the, what they are. I'm using this VB4C. That will be uh, at least one video just about that. But this is not that one. Clear URLs. Remove tracking elements from URLs. So this clears uh, the actual URLs and removes like weird uh, parts of URLs that are only used to track you. Um, so, so you will get cleaner URLs and, and send a little less uh, tracking information. Maybe we get back to this because I I, I don't care so much about this really. Yeah, you, I guess you can tell since I'm using uh, Vivaldi, but it, it's very, very difficult to become anonymous on uh, internet using a normal web browser, even if it's Pale Moon, even if it's Firefox, even if it's... It, it almost doesn't matter. You have to go, go through a lot of more uh, hoops than just choosing a good browser, you know? Uh, if that is your priority, but it isn't my pri priority really. It is very annoying. I wish we could have a, a private anonymous uh, uh, environment on when we are online, but we really can't. Decentralize sounds like uh, it's um, a, a, a privacy thing. It kind of is in a way, but it also uh, what it does is uh, it will install a bunch of these common uh, JavaScript uh, frameworks like uh, jQuery and also CSS, things like Bootstrap and things like that, you know, like these big frameworks. And they will install them, uh, versions of them locally on your computer. So many sites, they just use the vanilla version of jQuery, for example. And that, even if it is not a big program, I don't know, a couple of hundred kilobytes, it's it's something at least. And every site, almost every site uses one of these uh, stupid frameworks. But when you have decentralized, uh, instead of um, fetching those uh, libraries from internet, you fetch them from your local computer, making it a lot uh, faster. So this, I, I just use this uh, for performance improvements and I can really tell a difference with it. HTTPS everywhere. I'm not sure if I should or uh, use this or if I even need it. I, I don't know. I installed it. Uh, I No comment really, but whatever. I was just on a extension in, in installation uh, uh, binge, you know. I know Reader Companion. Let's not talk about that at all. Uh, Redirector, very cool extension. I will uh, make a short video just about this one. It's not that complicated, but it is uh, very, very cool. Uh, it lets you set up redirect rules. I, I think I only have one uh, right now. Okay, edit redirects. Yeah, this is the example one you get, but I have one for Reddit here, which will redirect uh, Reddit addresses to the old Reddit. And you set, set them up with um, uh, uh, um, regular expressions, which is uh, like my second language. So here we can see an example. If I, ha if I would have a URL looking like this, HTTP colon www reddit i3wm, it will translate it to this uh, URL you will get forwarded to that URL instead. And this extension, it's uh, much faster than using, uh, for example, user scripts uh, to do this. Uh, and this is something I haven't really uh, tried tried earlier, but it works fine. And it's created by this Einar Egilsson, which uh, sounds like a Swedish or maybe Ice Icelandic, uh, yeah, Icelandic software developer. So you can always trust uh, uh, Scandinavian um, developers. Uh, so I, I really like that extension. Um, 
and it's one that I use. Let's see if we can go back here. Then we also have skip redirect. You know, sometimes you click a link on a web page and it takes you to some middle weird. It, it, it says something like redirecting you to this web page, and then two seconds later you are on a different web page. What really happens here is that you go to a URL. And that URL kind of fetches information to track you and stuff and blah, blah, blah. It's very bad. And then you get where you really want to go. Uh, so this both enhance privacy a bit, uh, but also uh, performance boost since you don't have to middle land on those uh, weird redirect pages. Stylus uh, lets you inject uh, CSS into websites. It's a great, it's a fork of Stylish uh, and Stylish is now uh, spyware. So you should use Stylus. This works for Firefox and, and uh, Chromium as well. I guess all of these uh, work on at least Chrome, of course, but uh, many of them are also available on Firefox. Uh, Ublock Origin, Umatrix, uh, will not go into any details about those, but they block uh, content like ads and uh, cookies and, and things like that. Great extensions, kind of advanced to use and set up, and I will not go into any details more than this about them. But I, I really, th these are my favorite extensions. I think, uh, I think they are great uh, and. If I'm not mistaken, there have been a lot of controversy about both of these recently. And with the Chromium browser, they might, may or may not work correctly soon because they are Chrome and especially Google really don't like this stuff because they are uh, uh, Google, the part of Alphabet uh, is, uh, they are an ad selling company, so they don't like uh, ad blocking, whatever. Violent Monkey, it is like uh, Stylus, uh, but this injects uh, JavaScript into uh, websites. So you can write your own JavaScript uh, for websites. For example here, uh, Vivaldi. The, this doesn't have any JavaScript injected, but I inject uh, some CSS here, a style that I found uh, that overwrites the, the default. I know this is kind of silly, this is a sidebar here, but you can easily just turn it off and now we got normal Wikipedia and now we got cool Wikipedia, whatever. Just for readability uh, and because it's fun to, to modify CSS. It's a, good, it's a very good way to learn uh, CSS. Um, yeah, here we can see a bunch of my user styles and stuff here, whatever. So that's the extensions I use. Uh, we will take a deeper uh, dive into Violent Monkey, Stylus, uh, Redirector, uh, and especially VB4C. This is the first one we will focus on. Then we have, of course, also the Vivaldi settings here. That will be the next video. I go. We, we quickly uh, try to go through uh, the different settings here. It's not much to say about it and it's very it's a good straightforward uh, uh, UI here so it makes it easy to uh, uh, as you can see you can s configure a lot of things here and changing the tab bar position it's just a click of a well no it didn't work well, whatever it's because my own uh, style here it's not complicated it's not advanced but I think we have to take it in order so we do this first uh, then we install vb4c then we will look into how to inject uh, or change the user style of uh, Vivaldi itself because you can, can do that. You can see here is a weird setting, custom UI modifications and here I load a CSS that will override the Vivaldi UI CSS. You can also override the JavaScript which is what I'm doing here because here this looks like a status bar but it is actually the address bar and then I inject the status bar with JavaScript into the address bar and then I hide or remove the address field from the status bar to get this look. And that's kind of cool, uh -huh. but it is uh, also kind of stupid because there is uh, a serious issue with this. Look at this. If I open a video, uh, also this is the thing I haven't gotten working yet. Uh, you're supposed now with the latest uh, Vivaldi version here, you can click this button on all videos and that should open the video in a 
floating window like this. It's, it would be so cool if this worked, but it doesn't work. Uh, I'm not sure why, if it is, I, I, I don't use a, a compositor, I don't use Compton or Picom or anything, uh, I think it might be because of that, maybe not, maybe it's an i3 thing, maybe it's a, I don't know, I don't know why it doesn't work, but it doesn't. Uh, I will try to figure out why, at least. Uh, but my, my hack here, it seems completely unrelated, but for some reason, if you would click uh, full screen here and go into full screen, uh, on a video or something, then this happens. The whole window just becomes this uh, and you cannot do anything. Uh, you see the tab bar, everything disappears here. So the only way to get out of this state is to restart the browser and you will lose all your tabs and stuff. It's, it, it, it's a serious uh, issue and it's completely created by myself because I want to have this status bar in the address bar, in the status bar, in the, in the address bar, you know. So, I, I will not show you exactly uh, how, how to do that, because that would just give you this... Uh, it's almost like giving someone uh, a disease or something, you know. <laughs> um, but... Uh, but uh, Let's do this, let's open this guy here. This, these are some monitors I have here uh, for my browsers and, and the poly, poly bar and stuff. Uh, and look at this. Yeah, well, I know, I guess I have this here. Yeah, whatever. If I hint a link here, which I can do with this VB4C, uh, but I have created a special hint mode that uh, execute that girl script that I showed you in the last video. So if we hint this first video here, LG, I press LG on the keyboard. And now we can see it prints something in this terminal here. I also get this notification, hello, and then the URL, and I get something here. And that is from uh, this YouTube SH girl script here. And if you just use your little braino, you can just imagine writing YouTube DL instead here, and then you could do things with that. We will not go into YouTube DL and how to set that up, but we will go into, I will show you how to do this, because this is not built into VB4C. I had to, to do some, some, uh, uh, some stuff to get it working. We will look into that, I promise. This is just a, a, a prelude to uh, this little series about how to rise Vivaldi and I will show you some, some, some of my preferences. I will disable comments on this video and all uh, uh, other browser rising videos because people get so uh, uh, weird when you start talking about browsers, everyone have their important opinions, you know. Oh, Google is evil, but they have an Android phone, and I have a YouTube channel, but you shouldn't use Chrome. Uh, but okay, okay. Oh, but you can, oh, so you don't like uh, Firefox uh, just uh, out of po political reasons. Uh, yeah, I can't do it. Uh, well, that's not a valid reason. Uh, uh, well, that's because I disable comments, because I don't even want to, to I don't want to see, see them. Right, uh, sorry for getting a bit weird there, but uh, I really don't like uh, the, the browser discussion. Uh, it's, uh, it's weird, people are weird, you know. Uh, it, you, have to, you have to go all in, otherwise you are uh, uh, making, making yourself and making the actual cause, because I think it's a, an admirable cause uh, to to fight for privacy and uh, fight against uh, Google and the Chromium monopoly and all of that. That's good, that's good. We kind of should do that in a way, you know. But if you have an Android phone and a YouTube uh, uh, channel, you cannot, you cannot uh, do that. You can, then you just, then you give the opponents of that, you know, a very, very easy, easy, easy target. They, they say, okay, so Google is evil and Google is tracking you. What operating system is running on that unit that you have in your pocket or maybe in your hand right now, you know, it's also, it's, it's, it's Android, you stoop, you know. Uh, 
it makes me extremely annoyed when I think about it. Uh, 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 whatever, whatever. It was such a good spirit up until then, but I will uh, disable comments and just pretend that everyone is liking these and uh, uh, I don't know, maybe I can disable likes and dislikes also. I think you can do that. And if I can, I will. <laughs> and then just imagine that everyone loves these videos, make them, and then we will go back and make normal content again. Or normal, normal Bud Labs content, which this probably maybe is. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.